41. Um, I mean, it gives me immense pleasure to invite my great friend, Jacob Cherian, architect Jacob Cherian, uh, someone that uh, uh, I had an opportunity to do my architecture along. Uh, extremely fascinating. Uh, I mean, we, we know go back in time as, as students together and to see Jacob today as a, as a very reputed architect, architect of reputed Kerala, who have done some extensive work is, I mean, it's, it always was my, my interest to get Jacob in this forum. And I'm so glad that uh, he could take his time off to uh, share his work here. Um, Jacob did his architecture from NIT Trishi uh, way back in 19. And then, uh, and then uh, I, request, I request you to have the thing on with you. Thank you. Uh, following that, uh, he did his master's in urban design. Um, and very, very interestingly, Jacob has had some uh, excellent exposure as, as uh, being mentored by uh, none other than uh, Balakrishna Doshi during his uh, architecture student days. He did his internship uh, under him. Uh, then, of course, his master's program at, uh, at uh, School of Planning and Architecture in Delhi, where he got the uh, uh, opportunity to be mentored by Katie Ravindran, one of the renowned urban designers in the country. Um, he, he actually had a very extensive professional uh, career start at, uh, with uh, Ramesh Tarakan, and I, another renowned architect in Kerala. Uh, but through all of this, Jacob has always, right from my, the time that he was a peer student, uh, has been a great uh, 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 fan of regionalism and he, he always had this thing of bringing a regionalist approach to uh, architecture and as a student he nurtured that uh, passion and over a period of time i think he is he is he has not only nurtured it to a high level of proficiency but also used them in, in, in all his works and this particular topic was something that uh, we both discussed as there are many things that you could talk about from his work but one we Found which is very typical and all designers face is that uh, there are cases, there are situations when we do uh, design where the the uh, the constraints are very high, either because there is a uh, very strong, well laid out uh, diktat on how things should be done, but uh, that's that's that that goes to uh, mostly let us say. Uh, temples or in this case churches or any 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 place of religious worship where there are very strictly driven dogmas and then how as a designer when i have to uh, do something which is uh, need to be made uh, practically useful and practically amenable for today's uh, context there's a lot of constraint that as a designer we go through i mean you have to protect those those uh, doctrines at the same time you have to develop something which uh, fits the new regime of, of expectation. So we thought maybe give that twist to his uh, work and then, uh, though that is what is the central theme, but uh, it also uh, is a good opportunity to get exposed to how Jacob evolved as an architect, how he evolved as a designer, how, how he nurtured these thoughts in him. So it's kind of a mix of uh, seeing through his work how he evolved and also later on focus on how he dealt with this very, very, uh, what he calls as strict typologies that he has to deal with. So I don't want to cut down this introduction it's getting too long. Uh, with, without much ado, uh, over to you, Jacob Cherian. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you, Ravi. It is an honor to be uh, here on this forum. Uh, and uh, good evening to all. So. Uh, I had the privilege of uh, starting off uh, my uh, foray into arts in a, in a structured manner through an organization called Kerala Kalapidam, which was actually started by uh, this great artist called M. V. Devan, who was actually a Renaissance man in the sense that he was a man of letters and somebody who was also an architect, though unschooled, and somebody who had a, a, a great critical sense of things. And what he started as uh, this institution was uh, where you could go 
and nurture your skills, but they will not teach you anything, but you have to, like, there will be the sessions that you can do, like portraiture or still life, and then you can see exhibitions. But most importantly, you could get a good crit. And for a young, uh, like, 13-year-old, that was the big turning point. And uh, it was, whenever I go, he's no more, but whenever I have gone to a talk of his, he always starts with remembering his gurus, and he says, Guruve Namaha, so I also start my talk with Guruve Namaha. Uh, in his honor and the other gurus. So he actually uh, was a student under KCS Panikar, who was after um, uh, Raja Revarma, the most important South Indian artist. He actually um, was, was for a long time the head of the Madras school and actually um, he mentored a phenomenal amount of artists in this region. And uh, his body of work was something which actually was a great inspiration for me as a youngster because here was one person who, who had created the finest uh, water, uh, watercolors of Kerala landscape and the finest uh, proportioned uh, realistic paintings of his times and how he transformed into an abstract painter and that NGO process actually could be there as to be seen as a process of a person's development. And actually I understood that there is no full stop. I mean, you are just starting and then, so this process was very important and his body of work was actually something that I I, 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 I took to heart. And then uh, there was my mentor, the teacher who actually taught me in Kalavidam, or rather who gave me the crits, I mean, inspired by these two gurus, that is Kaladharan, an artist, who actually uh, asked me the most important question actually when you know, when as a youngster you know you have you are this you are this high when you do things well you do a still life well or a portrait well and then finally you fine tune it so well and i was burst like brimming with confidence when he finally came up to me and asked me so what is it that you have done that a photographer cannot do and that was the moment when i started thinking about i was looking at art beyond just uh, documentation and I understood how uh, so many things can be brought into it, so many expressions can be brought into it, and what is actually there in front of you need not be expressed exactly as it is. So with this, I go and uh, join architecture, and there I was uh, classmates with uh, three of the finest uh, individuals like Venkatesh, Devi Krishnan, and Arivaragan in 1985 in Arisitrichi. And uh, like uh, I hit the ground running because uh, I was already with this uh, phenomenal amount of sketching time behind me. You no, know? like I used to continuously do all this. So I was just continuing on um, uh, on my on my sketching spree. And then we had a great teacher with us that time called V R Langovan, who again inspired us to actually travel and learn because we started we were studying ultimately in a peripheral institution like R E C Trichy. And we didn't have much exposure, but library was one thing. And then we learned that traveling and sketching and then visiting other works of architecture was one way to learn. So I, since I already had the skill to document things, I just went on and then everybody else was also along. So it was a great five years we spent. So Tanjore was actually a major area of our, of our trips, weekend trips. And um, so initially it was sketching then understanding things we were documenting started to document uh, and um, those are all from tanjavur uh, got into we documented a uh, temple that's the amrita gareshwara temple for a nasa uh, uh, nasa trophy uh, there was so uh, and then towards the end i started figuring out how all this works because actually there was this temp this is there was this tower in tanjavur so this is actually receives as you go, it goes up. And I, I walked up the tower. In those days, you could do all that. And it, it now struck me, but it, much later I realized that actually, hey, the center, the staircase is not in the center. So I, ultimately, for a plan that receives, you would think the staircase has to be in the center. So that got me curious. And actually, I did a bit of investigation. And over, I think, almost one and a half months, where every weekend I would go, and I actually I would draw out the plan of every floor. And they figured out how the uh, the builders have actually concealed the staircase through the pillars, and that was a big uh, big uh, learning moment for me because I understood the wisdom of how these people do these things, and so uh, I knew that the like I, I always knew that actually buildings had something to teach us, but then this was like a very straightforward way of actually uh, of deft designing. 
armed with all this, I went for my um, uh, internship uh, under Doshi in uh, Sangat. And um, that was actually um, also because I had started uh, being in, uh, in Tamil Nadu and we were actually uh, away from the mainstream. So actually reading up on uh, the movements and all that and uh, deconstructivism was just starting. Sahagat was just still designing carpets at that point in time. But the one moment that really caught my imagination was the regionalist moment, as was called by William J.R. Curtis, who actually bracketed the works of uh, Lori Baker, Charles Correa, B.B. Doshi, Jeffrey Bava, and all of them, and branded them as regionalists, people who have actually uh, worked with a modern uh, idiom, but actually were, were rooted in their uh, in their culture. So this was something that actually I, from my, from my, from my, background in arts and all that, I could understand that this is something which is tangible and something I can work with. And there was climate response and all those things which actually could uh, uh, inform design. So I was, and then I, I came across my all time favorite architect that is Jeffrey Bava and his body of works, especially thanks to that white book, uh, which actually threw up this phenomenal uh, imagery of uh, lush green tropical landscapes and uh, and an architecture that just seemed to be uh, emerging from the landscape, uh, rooted in its uh, settings. So that was a major uh, turning point. And then when I finally had to do a thesis, I decided that I will do it on a regionalist approach to design, uh, giving myself the task of actually uh, studying the vernacular architecture of Kerala in whatever manner I can, and to come up with a design which will actually uh, have the uh, essence of that in the best manner of how the regionalist architects did. I was very ambitious and even foolhardy to do that. But anyway, that's how I started. So I, I'm, not, I'm not showing my studies sheets, but I'll show you my sketches across Kerala from that period. And uh, it was not a very structured one, but I made, made sure I visited all the temples and palaces and uh, the Nalikotus and all of that period. And uh, studying it from there's a visual angle to it i knew that it does not images but then images actually are also the 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 uh, the, the end result of this architecture so i understood it from details the way of planning and uh, the way you design using courtyards and verandas slope roofs timber all of these were actually uh, and then it, it led to my design process itself and uh, uh, considering the topic I have in mind, I will just uh, focus on the churches that I had actually documented along the way while we were doing this. And these actually are some of the sites which I eventually got to visit as luck would have it in as projects also. So these are from my late, from 89, 90 period. The typology and how the timber architecture and uh, the even the, uh, uh, the architecture of the land actually has been used even in mundane elements like the compound walls. Uh, uh, details etc especially the great fine amount of timber architecture that is used in the um, in the in the pumugams that is actually the front foyer to the churches so uh, and then i started my work career with uh, architect ramesh taragan who was a mentor uh, who is a gold medalist from sp delhi and I got to work with him, and then one of the first projects I got to do with him was actually uh, was actually an architecture in context project, but slightly different in the sense that there was this palace in uh, North Kerala that was broken down, and this client of ours had actually bought that particular piece, and he wanted us to integrate that into his house. It so happened that during my thesis studies, I had actually documented that particular palace, and so I, having some context on it, I got to do the, I, I was the project architect under Ramesh on that. And that was actually a, a, a nice way of actually doing architecture in context and integrating this and showing the respect that that project deserved, that, that structure deserved. We created a courtyard and then placed this building on one, one end so that actually we can see it from the other side and all that, from the existing building. And then in 99, I started my own practice, um, uh, called it uh, Place Designs after my urban design background, which actually taught me a lot about placemaking. So I was very transfixed with this term place. 
and that's my home office and the uh, structure in front is where i actually have used the one single element in architecture from traditional kerala that i loved that is the sloping screens and the uh, the, the sloping roof which actually gives a phenomenal amount of sense of space and the airiness also and that is my studio and then that's my house in the back so i've used my this this element from architecture from traditional as only just or just one that like a gateway structure for my my project but again uh, from the inside also that actually so this actually i'm sure that it's actually is a way of dealing with uh, the uh, typology uh, from the amount of studies i had I mean, that's what I, I had a fair amount of confidence in doing it and i used terracotta blocks and uh, before i jump to the churches that's the topic for the evening i just wanted to uh, uh, just talk about one college this is a 20 year project project ongoing that actually i've done uh, this is in a place called Kotem where we actually worked on a uh, large estate and then we brought in a building there but when we were actually essentially they were actually using a typology that we are all familiar I, it's in, of, that is familiar in kerala the client was also game to do that so we ended up creating something um, the certain amount of place making there and then there's an architectural language that we used which is actually rooted in kerala they just images from there the amphitheater and and this is the last project i would like to share that is actually architecture in context this is actually the the in the premises of the Durba hall in, in cochin which actually needed a it's, a it's an art gallery which needed an extension so there was an existing uh, building that on the left is the old Durba hall and on the rear is the, actually the old building that was actually gutted in a fire uh, so they wanted a center for art reference building put up there and uh, which we uh, did uh, that's the old and the new so we uh, matched the detailings of the old building uh, to uh, to fit into the uh, context and then created an entry structure for that and uh, all the elements are from the uh, old building only thing is that it's a three-story building whereas the old building is actually a two-story building we hit a three-story thing inside this as images from that yeah. and now we come to churches i'm sorry i took it this time because i wanted to show where i come from before i get into this typology so in churches um i got to do the first church uh, which is actually a renovation and extension to one of the churches that I studied as an undergrad student for my thesis. So this is actually the Pudupulli church, a 500 year old church. I mean, it's much older, but the structure that we actually intervened in was actually almost 100 years old. That is actually from the archives. Actually, the tower on the left actually was no more when, I, when we went to intervene, that had actually fallen down. But that was the old church. And that is my undergrad day. So I got lucky to actually there was a competition that actually i participated in and actually the at an idea level and then they chose my design see they wanted to it was a big parish and they wanted to expand and uh, they were looking at ways of doing it and i suggested that because i have some context here and then my grandmother is from this area so i said that no we need to keep the old church and we actually let's say let's add two churches parallel to it like a, we don't break the wall in between and in our in our syrian christian tradition that is possible because actually we, we can have three altars and there can be three priests can actually say the say the, the mass together so in a way it works so this is the first of a typology where an old church was actually kept these are the images from the existing church and uh, so that long facade on the left hand side top that is something that actually i i i, I was into that's actually a single story building but it's got a two story component there and uh, that is an element which i that's the interior so uh, that is old uh, there's a section and then the how the old church was so what i did was actually i said we will expand the church by 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 by, by pulling down the side structure we'll put in a new uh, church on either side new hall on either side and then put in this detail facade detail right there on the end so that actually finally it'll end up as if it looks the same you know it's as if there's no no change so that is how the final uh, thing evolved the center church stays, then we added the two side churches to it, uh, step back a bit so that it does not take the prominence of the old. The two clock tower, two, the two bell towers are also there on the sides. So that's the side element that we actually recreated, we documented, and then we, once that was pulled down, we recreated it further on 
so that actually at one glance it looks just the same there are images from that uh, unfortunately much many more additions were done to it subsequently uh, whereas actually we had given a vision for the same how it should be the site structure should actually be built uh, you, just after we had finished the church but uh, that is a uh, actually um, it is a disappointment that actually i could we could not uh, carry forth that engagement uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, to 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 its logical conclusion next i'd like to show uh, a church this is actually my grandfather's church in uh, vagathanam it's nearby in kottayam only it's quite close to the engineering college i did this is an old church that is existing again uh, the parish was big so they wanted to expand so uh, in the right hand picture you will notice a facade detail of the front foyer which actually we uh, decided that we will um, we will do document it and decided that we will uh, upscale it so that actually the new church will have the same features that, so that we are not bringing in any new elements here so uh, we just we, okay the, for the altar we actually had to bring in a new uh, dome structure on top because actually it's a, it's a landmark building which is seen from great distance so we had to have an element that actually can be seen from across the countryside. So that's how the new church evolved. The facade elements in the front are both from the old church, but scaled up. That's the uh, the, the the structure above the altar, and that's how the we have. So these are all the all the old churches are actually on top of hillocks, and you have the grand flight of steps leading up. Then you have a foyer with the facade, which is actually a smaller replica of the main facade, which is in the back and then the church hall that's a standard format uh, and that is the symmetry by the side view from there that's the inside and that's the aerial view of this church this is actually the uh, largest church i have done that's actually uh, um, in patanandita it's actually a um, it's a kind of a 100 year old church was there there again they had a larger congregation so they had to bring in a new church but the old church was just a hall there was not much no, no, no great architectural significance to that so um, anyway so the, the the brief was that actually you need to create a landmark structure because actually it's a try it's actually it's, can be seen from all four sides and it's on a hillock road is on on all the four sides so there is also a kind of a small uh, uh, by, by invitation competition for architecture for the church, which I was called because actually I had done a few churches by then. And uh, that's a site. And you can notice that the, the roads by the side. And uh, that's how we had actually imagined it to be. Uh, with a, it's, it's actually four times a normal church. It's the largest uh, Syrian Christian church in, in Jacobite church in Kerala. And uh, so we created it such that we have, it, we have this uh, Porches to the side, the entrances from the sides also that are given importance. Normally, we just concentrate on the front, and then in the back, anyway, the altar structure is there. And here, since the two sides are also visible, we created two semicircular uh, entrance ways to celebrate it uh, from the, the celebrate the access to the sides. That's the church in uh, plan and section. Mm, we used uh, domes uh, a bit here. And that, those are the studies made for the uh, church. This is the rear portion, and that is the concentrating on the front portion. And then it is actually a sequence of steps going up, of towers going up with a with a bell tower right on top. The rear side, the entrance foyer, which actually had to do uh, had to go up so that we can get that sense of scale and no, in uh, the sense of awe that you get, and then. Um, I opened up the main arch to the inside so that from the foyer you you can see through to the main altar rather than just close by a door. So that was the concept. These are the, con the initial presentation sketches. I'll just show you how it was finally uh, constructed. Uh, this is one church which actually, unfortunately, I couldn't control the outcome because uh, there's a phenomenal amount of uh, uh, of demand from the parishioners. For, for a great deal of ornamentation. So there was another agency that came in to ornament it up and add a lot of details into, into it. And uh, so the end product is not exactly like this, but the, 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 the structure is the same, but then it's all embellished with a phenomenal amount of detailing. That's how we envisioned the interior to be, the altar. And that's how we wanted it to be. 
uh, with with whites and a little bit touch of a little bit of gray and then uh, that's that's the image we wanted but uh, that it actually got transformed into something like this a lot more ornamentation came in and the interiors also had uh, a fair amount of uh, uh, timber work and uh, uh, the artwork in the entrance foyer and all that that's how the church sits this is actually uh, Maradi. This is a church actually. It's in a rural area, which actually is the closest to a traditional church I've done, wherein we have the, uh, the front facade and the, the rear facade, or the, or the second facade, all uh, are a perfect replica of the traditional form. And uh, the, from the side, so the altar had to be elevated because when we made the church big, there were these uh, tombs of the priests which actually would fall under the altar. So we elevated the uh, the the altar so that the, 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 the tombs can remain untouched. And that's how it is. Actually, it's a, it's on top of a hill. And on the left, you see uh, that's one of the old uh, church offices. And then, then there was a addition that was proposed for a parish hall that was actually made in this fashion. Uh, this is our smallest church we have done. This is in a place called Calpeta. This is in a triangular plot where it is all about uh, fitting in a church with a level difference and then um, addressing the uh, public domain that's actually the front and the side and how we are actually dealing with the it's actually got a le lower level which is like what a car parking and then the church is actually at the end from the uh, front Th that will explain it well so you enter from the front in the, on the higher level and then you go down and then you have the uh, low car parking but from the side road also we have created another facade for you to walk up to the church so that you don't see the parking behind so it actually feels like it is uh, addressing the two entrances and that's the uh, entrance foyer here again we use the notion of creating this opening of the church by creating this doorway that's big so that you can see the church from inside otherwise it would have been a wall with just a door so the fire is opened up and that's how it is now it's, it's almost complete it's getting complete this is actually um, more of a, um, an extension. It's, it's, we have not touched on the main church. We have that's the old church. It's, an, it's a very old church in in the center of a town in in Kerala, and uh, that's how the, that's how the existing building, existing church was. It had an addition of a of a foyer, which is actually in a flat roof format, and uh, so that was actually really pulling it down. It was not giving the right kind of image, uh, and. Uh, various things so they wanted to uh, do that they wanted to pave the yard uh, which actually i was against but then because the sand the river sand that was laid there was perfect but then they said they have got these huge functions which they need to put carpets otherwise so they had it to be paved with stone so and that, so it is like a lot of small small projects which actually add up to making this uh, which is a pilgrim center of sorts in a uh, in a more uh, personable manner so that's how we, we actually added that flat roof structure. We converted into a slope roof with a facade made. Uh, we added some structures by the side. To the right, we added a toilet block, which actually is the dark structure. is a toilet block, which uh, was camouflaged in there. And then uh, the side uh, buildings got uh, facade treatment. Uh, onto the cemetery, we created a, a C-shaped extension so that actually there's a connection between the church and the cemetery. That's the, on the right-hand side is the cemetery. And that is the another view from the church, from the front and from the rear. That's a view from the cemetery side where we have the C-shaped structure comes in creating a shaded area for people when, when, uh, when it rains and also connecting to the uh, this essential part of the church. That is the... Uh, That is the on the way to the cemetery there was an existing toilet block which we actually um, created a arched veranda in front so that actually it does not look like a toilet block there's no other way it had, to, it had to be placed there so we had to camouflage it a bit and that's how the aerial picture took us and i come to the last year this is actually one of the uh, probably the, the this is actually in this is not exact timeline in which i presented i, I wanted to save this for the last this is a city church this is my parish church and uh, uh, this is actually a 
in a way it's a city church too because it's in the it's in the city and it's in a flat terrain uh, and uh, that's the church with the with a with the with the parish wall by the side okay and these are our initial sketches so uh, this is again a comp limited competition that we won so what we said was that actually this church had to be uh, like there's always this impression that we have i have that actually these ch churches have to be on a hill like on a raised platform so i suggested that we'll have a uh, we'll create that raised platform by means of two levels of car parking one is a basement one is a ground floor parking and the front of that will be having a staircase which actually so that is the uh, stairway that will lead up to the church which is on the first floor then we'll also have a ramp to go up so that so we can create this this feel of a hillock through that and then um, then it had it was addressing a road a narrow road so we what we did is we created a, a, a curved uh, entrance way with arches with you know with columns and then we placed a we, we, we placed a small uh, a cross with the with, with an with the, with the, with the, with, the, with, the, with the prayer area in front so that creates the kind of a front for the church from the from the city then you uh, that's how it is yeah that is the that's the, that actually you, we, we took it back a bit so that actually we get a kind of a public realm there then we have the front yard then we have the steps going up and then the church beyond and then there's a parish or existing parish out to the side which we again we actually rework eventually those are the details we had actually proposed at the initial levels the interior uh we wanted to have this uh, custom-made lights which actually would throw light and create some kind of uh, sense of scale inside the large volume and that's how it is actually as it is actually executed so the colonnade and then the uh, the thing leading up to the church which is actually again this is actually a discussion happened about how do we how do we create a church in a city it's a city church so instead of actually repeating the facade detail in the front we created a a, a, a town hall image for the church which is actually the pediment and the columns so which actually gives you that image of a city hall in some way because it had to from the city in this manner and then um then you go up the flight of steps and uh we enter this foyer which again actually we had this is actually the first church where actually i opened up the foyer to the church inside by creating a, a door inside a glazed enclosure so that actually the, the foyer is actually open to the church inside and uh, then we had to to give some sense of volume to this we had created a dome on top so that we get the light coming in from above with stained glass and ventilators for the hot air to exhaust to the left there is a ramp coming up and to the right there's a staircase going down there's a lift also that's the uh, that's the entrance foyer up that's from the from the first floor looking down onto the platforms and then the church inside that's the inside of the church with the custom built lights uh, timber roofs and then uh, balconies on top for maintenance essentially that's actually from the upper level that's actually not used for uh, essentially it's only used for photography if people go up there but anyway that's a, that's for maintenance but then you get this view also that's the church interior uh, so we have got uh, the, there's the main altar and the two sub altars inside and then two altars outside so there's actually for we have got something called where we have a moon mel kurbana we have three priests and then when you have anjin mel we have five priests actually offering prayers that are the details of the sides and this actually as you come down from the church looking towards the foreground so this is actually that commanding uh, elevation that the, the height that we want the church to have so that you look down you can you, you you can walk down the steps onto the yard in front and then you have the cross which is a feature in all serene christian churches across in the front and then you have the the road and the city beyond that is a ramp going down and that's a step going down and that is actually the uh, church uh, uh, that is actually the parking below uh, then to the view towards the cemetery and from the cemetery towards the altar in the back the church in uh, in its context yeah that's it so i'm done that's the, that is the last slide thank you
Thanks, Jacob. Um, I just wanted to ask you uh, before I open this uh, for Q&A, uh, would you want yeah. to highlight one or two very specific uh, challenges uh, in, from any of these examples where, you know, it's our well laid out norms of how a church has to be. And yeah. Uh, but yeah, actually, you, uh, no, I, I you, yeah, in a new context, either, for example, you created levels for parking, which probably may not be a, uh, uh, it's a modern, whatever this is a demand from modernity, or you could talk about yeah. that uh, uh, town hall view of this. These are all, all not, not something that you add and push the norms to accept. Yeah. Is there any challenges sure. that you want to highlight one or two of that would be very useful? No, actually, uh, the uh, the main challenge uh, was, uh, see, the thing is that I had actually, I, hadn't, I didn't have to be forced to do, follow this strict form because I am, I am a Syrian Christian, I am Jacobite. And it is that the fact that our way of our celebrating the mass has been unchanged for a thousand years. And uh, the, the, it's unlike many churches which have actually reinvented and actually uh, have had, uh, even in the way they celebrate their mass and all, there's a change. Our church, it is actually totally tradition bound. So I was actually mentally prepared to do that. I, I had no issues with that. But of course, it had to have some small, so like the, the, that, that's the reason why I, I kept this for the last. Here, actually, I had this, uh, I could I could marry this need for this church to be on an elevated platform with actually the um, the need to put in parking. So I could manage that. I, I could convince them. It's just a matter of convincing them to put that grand flight of steps. That's all. I mean, because this is, the rest was easy because anyway they knew that they had parking had to be given about 120 cars had to be parked here so that is the only way it could be done the other thing was regarding the second facade and actually there i also was actually a bit confused i was actually thinking of doing a replica of the main facade in the front but i knew somehow it was not opening up it was not giving the right kind of image so we were discussing this a lot and we had done many iterations before we hit upon this particular it was like more like let's say a safe bet to give it a somewhat secular uh, front frontage because it's a city church it's, it's right it's in the midst of a multicultural society there and uh, so that is one thing and actually the the entire aspect of opening up the church and creating that big uh, entrance way the drama that we created there and all frankly the parishioners didn't know i had put it all in because i didn't tell them also they knew it when it happened and they had no issues with it but I felt that actually there are some details that we need to discuss with them, engage with them, and actually take their consensus on. But there are these details which actually could just be pushed through without them realizing it. And then, then it's got a particular scale, and it, it, it looks impressive. They are fine with it. The biggest challenge, I'll tell you, in designing churches, and, and, and I'm tired by designing churches, is actually because I have to design by consensus. And uh, it is that it is not uh, unlike... a a typical project where I need to deal with maybe a family or maybe a board of directors. Here I need to do, deal with the entire parish and everybody's opinion counts. And so it becomes like a free for all. And I need to be a builder of, I need to be a consensus builder before I become an architect here. And this is a certain amount of compromise that actually happens. So that is a problem. So I, I know, I know of architects who have done 50 churches, 100 churches. I know there are people who have done more than 100 churches. I've, I've done 10 and I'm quite happy with that. Thank you. I'm just uh, opening this forum for the Q&A. Uh, those yeah. of you who have a question, please put your, uh, click that hand icon so that I know. Uh, Go ahead. Sir. Go ahead. Sir. Okay, you can do it. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, first of all, it looks like you've been groomed to be an architect and a place of worship creator. It's amazing to know that since 13 years of age, you've been able to kind of have such a good hand on really documenting structures so beautifully. The sketches you showed are too, too good. And uh, just wondering, now that you have done both a very new, uh, fresh city-based place of worship, as well as you've done extensions of existing places of worship, was there any constraint in using those 
typical laterite and uh, what do you call a lot of those mangalore tiles in the new structures where i see a lot of uh, rcc has been used here and all plastered and painted flat yeah so was there a constraint there to continue with the traditional uh, what do you call typically keralaite uh, construction materials Uh, actually, uh, the uh, the use of Mangalore tiles, which we have done extensively in our uh, engineering college campus, which actually, like I, I showed in between, uh, because that is actually I could convince the client about it, and, and then that is fine. Whereas, like I said, in churches, it is designed by consensus, and actually I can only have so much of say in the matter. So uh, the, there is this push for uh, sheet roof, metallic sheet roofing, and... Okay. Uh, concrete which actually i cannot actually um, left to myself i may have wanted to do but then the thing is that i know about the challenges because like especially if you use mangalore tiles like we need to be so careful about the leaks that may happen like we need to so the one way we have done managed it is by actually creating a we, we need to create a, a like a fall ceiling of sorts which actually will take care of the leak and then so basically we it's a lot of work to do that and then that shoots up the cost a lot and then um, that was a problem especially in a place of worship like in the college and all that is all right because it's a college and then they're fine they, they will do it. they have a maintenance team that runs after it and they'll take care of it but in churches that's not the case and uh, so those were uh, areas where actually i could not um, uh, like expand on that but anyway mostly our our churches are all plastered very very few structures are exposed that right anymore here and then availability of laterite is also a concern. So okay. uh, that typology does not get used much here. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Yeah. Any, any, any more questions? Uh, there is uh, Pudi Ravi Krishna who has a question. Uh, please, Pudi, go ahead, go ahead. And yeah. after this, Boban. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jacob, I really loved uh, all the older churches and uh, how you uh, worked with them. So, one of the things which in when traveling in Bangalore is when I saw a church, I see this huge brass pillar and there is a cross at the top. So, uh, it resembles the Gajasthamam that you find in a yeah. temple. So, I was yeah. curious, uh, do you know the history of how that came to be a standard feature uh, for Syrian churches? See, uh, yeah, see, that's the Kodimara. Okay, that's there in actually that uh, the, the, in even this church and in even in that, uh, that Paravur church also that's there. So the thing yes. is that actually a whole load of, uh, like in my documentation also, in the older churches, I documented, I found that a whole load of uh, elements are actually coming in from the uh, traditional uh, uh, architecture of Kerala. And also our church actually, it's, it's been here for a long time. You know, we, 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 this uh, Syrian Christian Jacobite churches have been here, this, we, we as a people have been here for a long time. And we have integrated a um, uh, lot of things, like for example, the center of this particular church, you, you'll find a big uh, lamp, a brass lamp with, with, with layers of lamp, lights, no? Layers of light. So that, that's all, we, it's all traditions that I, I wouldn't know because I remember this from all, from, from my childhood, I remember these elements being there. So they've been yeah. there, integrated into our, uh, so I'm sure that it's because they needed a Kodimaram that's actually a flagpole for, um, hoisting the flag when there is a when there's a church celebration and I'm sure that typology was actually uh, borrowed from the temple architecture and anyway the people who built were essentially the carpenters and everybody they, they are all from the, from 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 the from, from from the land so all this also would have been would have, would have been integrated like that yeah yeah thanks thanks Jacob thanks Ravi Boban you want to go Boban Varghese, you have to unmute. Boban, can you hear us? I 
I'm not sure if he's able to hear us. Um, in the meantime, Jacob, I have a question. There was one yeah. that you spoke about um, uh, this ornamentation, uh, which you didn't plan for, uh, but it was uh, brought in, uh, even though you, you had not designed for it. So are, are all these coming from a typology uh, uh, demands, or is it something that is is uh, is is a is a more of a modern uh, influence of you know you can't have anything bland we need to do something even I don't know where does that come from? No, actually there is a see there is a uh, uh, there is a there is a group of uh, practitioners, especially in the church <coughs> building uh, uh, in this in this in this line who actually are very good artists. Actually, I, I must compliment them for that. Who have documented, who have studied this, and then they have their USP is actually to create very ornate um, detailings for the churches, and uh, and they got it's like design build too. They have the people, the workmen also to do it, and they are not architects. They are actually essentially people who are more artists. And uh, the thing is that actually, so it's got a lot of uh, uh, it, it gives it gives a phenomenal amount of richness in a way. So. Uh, that is something that a lot of lay people actually want. And so like, for example, in the altar, like traditionally in our altars, in our churches, it's actually made of wood. The altars are made of wood. The altar structure by itself is called Aigla, it's made of wood. Whereas now, post this, actually it's all made in masonry, plastered and then gold leaf painting done and all that. It's very, very, very detailed, meticulously done. It is just that actually at times, uh, I, I realize that actually there's nothing, for, nothing that we can do there because I said there's somebody who does it well, I may or may not, I really don't like so much of ornamentation happening. That's a fact. Uh, but uh, especially when it's actually something that actually I've designed. But uh, that's the way it is. And so they, uh, what they do is they actually bring in this, uh, art, these, these uh, people and they will, they'll add on this layer. You no, know? they'll add on this layer to it, which um, um, uh, frankly, it actually makes it very, very complex. And uh, also, in fact, that church is actually also fully air conditioned also. So that is actually, um, that, 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 that I think probably, that's actually four times a normal church and it's air conditioned. And unlike the Catholic churches where there's a mass every day, we have a mass once a week. Or maybe, 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 maybe twice or thrice. That's it. The other, in a Catholic church, it'll be, there will be mass in the morning and then in the evening. And then, so it's a daily thing. It's, it's used. But for us, it's like, uh, it's it's occasional. So an air-conditioned church is actually, uh, so it just, uh, it, it's like, uh, it, it, there are other things that play there. So, well, I don't agree with it, but then it's a fact. Okay. Boban, uh, Varghese, you want to go? Really? Yeah, yes, I mean, I can. Um, Jacob, it was an exciting, um, it's good to see the works that you have done, but even before getting into the work and asking some questions, um, let me comment to you on your remarkable sketches. Uh, that was a pleasure to see some of those sketches. I mean, especially during your early years while studying architecture or even practicing architecture. And you have a remarkable pedigree. I mean, understanding Katy Ravindran, B.V. Doshi, and those are, those are significant individuals. Um, and you are extremely lucky to have that background. So that's one. Um, and the second, it's it's a comment, or maybe a few comments I can make it. I mean, Jacob, maybe you can yeah, sure. um, you can comment on it. Sure. Um, one thing is that with the churches, it's my experience is, and what I have heard from other architects as well. You don't have a client in the sense. I mean, your the client. What I mean by that is, as someone who is making a swift, significant decisions. Um, in a church design, I think everyone takes decision, but no one takes decision. And that's a quite a dangerous environment or a territory for an architect to work with it. Um, because you can't change the fundamentals because, say for example, you can educate a client, but if your client is an amorphous group of people, you can't educate. You can throw ideas at to the people, and they will come with the probably traditional feedback what they have known about it, 
or what they have biased about it. And in a, in a serious architectural profession with any other client, um, yes, you, you think you can teach the client, you can educate them, you can elevate their understanding of architecture, you can speak to them about spaces, forms, qualitative aspects of it. And with that background, talking to someone about um, spiritual space and a spiritual place is an extremely difficult one. And I don't know how you manage it because you have done significant works. Um, maybe you can comment on that, uh, how to capture the spiritual space or the spirit of this place as well as the spiritual place. So that's one thing. The second is, again, the, the complex set. I mean, architecture in all oh, the churches in Kerala are evolved probably around um, 1,900 years of history. Um, but they also have, so there's a traditional Kerala architectural form and elements on one hand. Plus we have the colonial one, Portuguese and the Dutch influences. And if you look at some of those tradition or some of those churches, we see specific elements that came from the Portuguese influence, for example, those fan shaped, those um, sun rays, and we can identify specific um, Dutch influences or elements came from Dutch influences. So there's a particular lineology that exists, but then beyond that, the simple question comes in, where do we, where do we go? Do we go the traditional route or do we get into the abstract sense and with abstract language, et cetera? And I think the church has taken a decision. I think the, and the parishioners might have taken a decision that oh, we have to go into the traditional culture, it's kind of an inculturation process that is going on. And that I have seen that almost all over the world. Um, that's taking place in other religion as well. I think there is a common thread that is running through India at the moment, going back to the traditions. Yeah, that's a, quite a lot. That of language that. is... Jacob, yeah. you want to and, comment on... Yeah. On, oh, sorry, I so maybe I can stop it. <laughs> Jacob, go ahead. No, yeah. no. No, no, you, you, yeah, uh, that, that's two things. See, actually, uh, the, the, the first part of the question is essentially what I said about uh, this uh, <laughs> designing by consensus. And I actually, uh, I got tired out. I'm, I was worn out uh, mentally. And, and they all take time, you know, like this, these projects, they take forever, like five years, uh, five years to seven years. There's one church which actually took uh, seven and a half, eight years to complete. And uh, so finally, I realized that the, the only silver lining in it for me when I had to look for some silver lining is that my team was unchanged. Whereas actually, the, in the from the church side, the in the, the the priests changed, then the, uh, the the persons who are the trustees they changed, the contractors changed, but uh, me and my office staff actually they stayed. So I finally told them, see, hey, I'm the we are the only guys who who, who, who are constant in this entire thing. But, uh, but all that aside, uh, it is actually a tough thing. So when I, like I said, I met, I've done about ten churches, and I, I th I'm I'm ready to call it quits. Uh, I, I I find it mm. very very challenging, and I actually to 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 build a consensus is difficult. And uh, what I try to do is that actually, by to do that, I I I have to I work over time. We make models. And then we make 3D views, and we do all these things just so that we have to 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 to, to, get, to, to convince them about uh, our genuineness, a, and uh, then our uh, uh, interest in the project and everything, and how how much we are invested in this. But uh, the problem I found is that actually that amount of actually detail that we do initially to actually uh, make them interested in us, and and then show that we are a thing also makes them kind of bored by the time four, four or four, three years have gone because then they think we have seen it always. So why don't we look at something new? So then they again want something new done. And uh, so the thing is that you, you don't win. So ultimately you would keep working or uh, so the, so in many ways for me, this, uh, this, this form, like you specifically mentioned the way we have evolved the search form with this, uh, with this, uh, with this influences from abroad and everything. We have, we have come to a particular understanding that this is what a church looks like. And uh, the fact that that at least remains a constant is a big actually thing because they don't want to go beyond that. Okay, they may want to do things with it, 
and we can we can slip in things so i have done i think actually by by the small interventions i have done in the foyer and the way we enter and all those things we have done some very minor interventions which actually make a significant change to the way the typology and i think the most important change we made actually was way back when i was in my early 30s and i did the first church that the pudupalli church where i proved that an existing church can be maintained as it is and two parallel things can be done because i forgot to mention that that is now become like a multiplex in the sense that the central church actually keep is kept as a because the side doors can be closed can be kept as a pilgrim center whereas on one side church actually a wedding can happen and on the other a baptism can happen so for a large parish it actually helps it's a three in one and during a sunday mass they keep the doors open and then they have three priests officiating the mass so the yeah that yeah that sense of congregation together mm. so but and i found that actually that has been followed in many old churches uh, i won't say many but some of the important churches they have followed that so in the, in that sense i feel that actually i've been able to contribute in some way through a project and this aspect of opening up the facade is another thing that has been now fairly routinely followed so there are some things which have I, i know i have been able to give and i'm quite happy with that and um, i don't know where it goes because actually um, for me the volume inside and then the altar and uh, the way it is done i i i am more drawn to if at all there's one thing i would like to control more is that the amount of light inside the altars because actually i would i would mm-hmm. rather in, in rather the light inside the new church i would rather have less light and that i think somehow is an essence from an old church which actually can be brought in by reducing the openings or maybe having timber shutters for the windows that is something that may i if at all i'm going to do another church i will probably cut down on the lighting inside through natural ways ventilation yes but lights through this uh, so that the candle light from the altar and then the lights that are there that will create an internal environment which actually gives a great much more great uh, spiritual experience inside uh, anyway that is something that i may want to do if i get to do one more search i i if at all yeah good i mean we just take a uh, wish that you will have many more churches to do in the coming years <laughs> <laughs> we just have uh, time for one last uh, question comment i think it's come from varki palathu cheru um, please go ahead hi i i take the question to avoid having to speak it but uh, some good to see you great presentation so what i've written is that i believe you know in ancient kerala churches were more functionally integrated with the communities around them so there were more community functions happening than just the religious so the old churches had the nataka shala in front that where you had community yeah. events and dramas and things like that. so i i can't we really reimagine our churches today to do more than just this once a week limited use for religious purposes it seems to be such a lot of money spent for such little use no isn't there a opportunity for that hi hi he, he's my uncle by the way hi bonchan <laughs> hello hi so uh, your question is um, uh, see this is this is something that has been actually on my mind a lot uh, but uh, actually uh, you know i i i i if i can make a uh, if i can make a, a comment on this see uh, in a in a different way like we every church actually now builds a parish hall okay and that's these are all big affairs now because the idea is not just for the parish itself but it's for giving it out on rent for other other fam- communities also to use the parish hall so in my native place this that i not shown that church here we had also they were also going to build a parish hall so i told them that see this what is the point in creating these big volumes and then you just have one wedding once in a blue moon and what is the point so i suggested that actually it, it's a, it's a monsoon kerala so why don't we why don't you let me design it so that i can fit in three shuttle badminton courts inside okay so i'll i'll work out the proportions accordingly and i'll ma- i'll manage the heights accordingly and all that and uh, and i went ahead and did that that's all i did it is just the dimensions that actually suit a shuttle court but then what followed was that there is this backlash from the parish which said that we asked him to make a hall and he has created a an indoor shuttle court for us so it is like uh, there is no way you can actually in many ways you cannot communicate and tell see this is not it's just numbers 
it is just certain proportions that's it it, it is you you don't want to play shuttle court fine you don't want to play shuttle it's all right but they will not they they never play shuttle inside they would rather play it outside and then when it's raining they don't play but they will not use the inside for i don't know for what reason i have not been able to convince them it's my own parish from my native place so it's impossible i mean it is impossible for us to actually in any way see we can uh, so that's the only time I try to actually give a suggestion in some manner which actually can be used uh, by the by the youngsters in the parish in a more efficient manner. But that, that it came to a naught. So th that is a problem. This actually this. Uh, but then again, the thing is that now every every institution I think uh, you got so many uh, spaces, no, which actually larger spaces where for events and all that. So I guess uh, these our uh, these churches as venues for that probably is reducing and in fact in fact while i mentioned about the largest church part i was also thinking that my god that is a that's a lot of that's a lot of building and there's a lot of money going in there so uh, okay. uh, actually irreverently irreverently speaking i will just give a, a it's sheer irreverence no it's not irreverence okay sorry there's no controversy here but there's a point from a from a from a, from a great uh, author's uh, book it's called uh, so there's this character he's a thief his name is ponin kurishu toma ponin kurishu means actually gold cross so his name is thomas so he's called gold cross thomas why is his name so is because he actually uh, uh, like um, like took away the gold cross from the church and he was caught by the police and they asked him why did you do it? And then he said, "Why did the why the Christ hung on a wooden cross? So why do you need a golden cross inside?" Right. So, no, so exactly. I don't think so I have to make more. I don't think I have to make more. No, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, I, I think it's a it's a social issue, right? It's a, we need to yeah. educate. We need to inform. People need to see that you know. Anyway. Let me stop. The great presentation, good response. Thank you for this. Uh, and I want to thank IDC thank for organizing this. Very thanks, much. thanks. Thanks so much. And unfortunately, actually, we're really getting into it. And that's when we have to close. And I'm so uh, uh, sad to do this. Um, I mean, it's it's a, I think your, your the last comment is the most, uh, uh, it's a, it looks like an opening thought comment. And and how you, we ask these, we, as designers, we have a, great role to even influence some of these questions and maybe the answers are not within us it is probably the community which also yeah. needs to know that possibilities and something will evolve and i'm sure jacob the the the, the challenges that you have gone through the the kind of uh, work that you have done i mean as you said the consensus building i think there's a great deal of uh, learning involved there and I hope, apart from your excellent documentation of the physical space, I think there is a lot of documentation of of, of all of that, uh, the soft side of what happened and, and the and the exchanges that have happened and how those decisions got influenced. That would I think will actually make a even uh, powerful and parallel powerful story. I think apart from this physical space, we need to add the extra comment of what were the politics and also debates that went around when something got made would actually throw a lot of yeah. uh, uh, useful documentation for the future designers to look at. And of course, like Bob and said, you should still continue to do more churches, even though you call it quits. I'm thinking it's coming your way. And uh, with that, I, 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 I would like to thank all the attendees of the session today uh, for, for, for uh, being part of this very excellent uh, uh, discussion uh jacob thanks for your time i know that we have pushed you so hard right you appreciate you and uh, it is it is great and and uh, to I'll let you know that this recording of this will be made available tomorrow as usual for uh, that we do for all the talks and i would like to thank uh, my other volunteers nimesh vora uh, uh, raj gopal menon and uh, rahul sharma uh, we will see you all next week again for the next talk. And uh, with that, I say it's good night and uh, have a great week ahead and we will catch up again next week. Thank you. Thanks, Jacob. And thanks, Ravi. Thanks, thanks. It's lovely.